Today's problem is, given a string, find the length of the longest substring without repeating characters. For example, given the string ABC, ABC, BB, the longest substring without repeating characters is ABC with a length of 3. Given BBBBB, the longest substring is B with a length of 1. And given PWWKEW, the longest substring is WKE with a length of 3. First, I'm going to go over the naive brute force solution. The strategy for this solution is that we're going to look at every index in the string and find the max length substring without repeating characters starting at that index. While we're doing this, we'll keep track of the maximum length we have seen so far. Let's take a look at the third example up here. Starting at index 0, the longest substring without repeating characters is PW with a length of 2. This is our maximum length so far. At index 1, the longest substring is W with a length of 1. At index 2, the longest substring is WKE with a length of 3. Now the maximum length so far is 3. At index 3, the longest substring is KEW with a length of 3. At index 4, the longest substring is EW with a length of 2. At index 5, the longest substring is just W with a length of 1. The maximum length that we found was 3, so we return 3. Let's code the brute force solution. First, let's create a helper method to find the max length substring without repeating characters given a string and a starting index. We'll create a set to keep track of the characters we've seen so far. Then let's create a for loop from the starting index to the length of the string. When we see a new character, we'll add it to the set. Otherwise, when we see a character that we've already seen, we'll return the length of the substring without repeating characters, which is given by the current index minus the starting index. If we make it through the loop, the substring length is given by the length of the string minus the current index. Now let's go up and write our main function. We'll create a variable, maximum length, initialize it to zero, and it will keep track of the maximum length we've seen so far. We'll loop through all indices in the string calling our helper function. If the length we get back is greater than the maximum length, we'll update the maximum length. When we finish the loop, we'll return the maximum length. Now let's run through some test cases to make sure our solution is correct. Yep, it looks good. So this solution has a time complexity of O of n squared because the helper method has a time complexity of O of n and we're calling the helper method n times. We can definitely do better than this, and I'll go over a better solution. The better solution involves something called a sliding window. The sliding window will have a start index and an end index. The substring between the indices will not have any repeating characters. We'll loop through the string incrementing the end index as long as we don't meet a repeated character. When we do meet a repeated character, we'll update the start index of the sliding window so that the substring within the window contains only unique characters. While we're looping, we'll keep track of the maximum length of the sliding window we've seen so far. Let's walk through an example with the sliding window, taking the string ABCADCEF. 
will initialize the start and end indices of the sliding window to zero. At end equals zero, we see the letter A at index zero, and we can update max length to one. Let's increment n to one, and we see the letter B at index one, and we update max length to two. Now we increment n to two, we see the letter C at index two, and we update max length to three. Now is the tricky part. When we increment n to three, we see the letter A at three, However, we've seen the letter A before, so we have to update the start of the sliding window to keep it valid. Now we've seen A at zero, so we update start to zero plus one. And the max length is still three. Now let's increment N to four. At four, we see the letter D, and we update max length to four. We increment N to five, and we see the letter C. We've seen C before at two, so we update the start to two plus one. Now we increment N to six, and we see the letter E, and the max length is still four. Finally, we increment N to seven, we see the letter F, and we update max length to five. Let's code the sliding window solution. First, we'll create a hash table to keep track of characters we've seen and at what index we've seen them. We'll initialize maximum length to zero and the start index of the sliding window to zero. Let's loop through the indices of the string, incrementing the end index of the sliding window. If we've seen the current character, we'll update the start index. The reason why we take the maximum of start and where we've seen the character is we never want to move the start of the sliding window backwards. Then we add the character in its index to the hash table. We'll update the maximum length if the sliding window length is larger. Finally, when we finish looping, we return the maximum length. Now let's check to see if our test cases pass. Yep, it looks good. Since we only loop once and we perform constant time operations within each iteration of the loop, the time complexity of the sliding window solution is O of n, which is the optimal time complexity for this problem. As always, the code will be posted on GitHub with a link in the description. Thanks for watching, and if there's any problems you'd like me to cover in the next video, feel free to comment below. Thanks.